So we're continuing on with question number 18. I need to identify the two statements that contradict each other. So I'm looking at 18, I'm going to read through these three statements. First one says, triangle ABC is a right triangle. Okay, I know what a right triangle is, so I'm thinking about that. Two says, AC is twice the length of BC. Interesting. Three says, measure of angle A equals measure of angle B equals measure of angle C. Okay, now I'm really thinking, because if all of my angles are congruent and I have a triangle, then I know each angle must be 60 degrees. But up here, for one, it says it's a right triangle, which means at least one of my angles is 90 degrees. So one and three are in direct contradiction. Moving on to question 19. Again, I'm reading through my statements. The first one says that this triangle is acute. The second one says my triangle is isosceles. The third statement says that the measure of angle X is bigger than the measure of angle Y, which is bigger than the measure of angle Z. So if I'm thinking about isosceles, I remember that two angles are congruent in an isosceles triangle. Just like the one they gave me in this picture, I have an isosceles triangle because it has two sides congruent, but that also means that its base angles are congruent. So that means two angles are congruent, but this third statement says that none of them are congruent because X is bigger than Y is bigger than Z. So two and three are contradicting each other. I'm going to slide the paper up a little bit so we can take a look at questions 20, 21, 22, and 23. Okay, so for 20 and 21, it says list the angles of PQR from smallest to largest. So if you notice, they gave us sides, and then we have to write what we know about the angles. So the way this works is I'm going to find my smallest side first, because my smallest side corresponds to my smallest angle. The angle that is across from that side, or opposite the triangle, is going to be the smallest angle. So angle P is my smallest angle in this picture. My next smallest angle would be across from my next smallest side. So angle R. And then my largest angle is across from my largest side, which is angle Q. Same thing applies in the next problem. I'm looking for my smallest side, which is 10. Across from 10, I have angle Q. My next smallest angle is going to be angle P. And remember, your largest side corresponds to your largest angle. So angle Q, then angle P, then angle R. Questions 22 and 23 are very similar, except I want to list the sides from shortest to longest. So you've noticed they've given us some angles here, and we need to use that information to get to our sides. Well, the first thing I recognize is that I do not have all three of my angles in question number 22. I do know that two of the angles are 61 and 59. So I'm going to add those two things together, which gives me 120 degrees. And then I need to subtract that from the total 180 degrees, which exists within a triangle, I get 60. So I know my third angle is 60 degrees. Now that I have all of my angles, I can go through and I can list my sides in order from shortest to longest. So my shortest side is going to go with my smallest angle, which means I'm looking at angle D, which measures 59, and I want the side across from it, which is E, F, or F, E. Either way you want to write it. My next smallest angle was my 60 degree angle, and that's across from side D, E, or E, D. And then my largest angle was at E, so my largest side is D, F, or F, D. 23, I'm going to do the same thing. And here as well, I noticed that I haven't been given all three of my angles. I've been given a 90 degree angle and a 44 degree angle. So I need to add those together 
and then subtract that total from 180 degrees, which gives me 46 degrees as my measure for angle F. So now I can begin. I can start looking for my smallest angle. Well, that's at angle D, so my smallest side is EF or FE. My next smallest angle is 46, which is across from DE or ED. And my largest angle is that 90 degree angle, which is across from DF or FD. Now I noticed something. This angle or this answer is the exact same as this answer. That is not always going to happen. That just happens to be the case in this specific problem. Okay, but that is not always going to happen, so please do not think that's going to be a pattern. All right, so I'm going to move my paper up. We have two more problems. So for problems 24 and 25, we want to write an inequality that relates the given measures. I'm writing an inequality. So I need to figure out for 24, is the measure of angle D, A, D, B bigger than the measure of angle B, D, C? Or is it the other way around? So the first thing I check is I check to see whether I have two congruent sides. And I see in this picture I have one set of sides congruent. And then I also have this side in the middle that is a reflexive side, meaning that that's congruent to itself. So I do have two congruent sides, which means I can start comparing the angles and the sides within these two triangles. I now see that I have two different side lengths here. I have 16 and 18. 16 is the smaller side, which means that angle A, D, B must be less than angle B, D, C. And then in 25, I'm doing the same thing. I see that I do have two sets of congruent sides because I have this 9 congruent to this 9, this 9 congruent to this 9. In fact, they're all congruent to each other because they're all 9. And now I'm checking my third side length. I've got 7 and 8, meaning that angle O must be less than angle K. So now I'm looking at the next problem here, and I'm just filling in the blank. I'm comparing in number 26, comparing BC and ED. So in my picture, I see BC is here, ED is down here. Now, I see in those pictures that I have some tick marks here, here, and here, meaning I do have two sets of congruent sides between these triangles, and I can compare my angles and sides. Well, I see an 88 degree angle here and a 90 degree angle here, meaning that BC, corresponding with my smaller angle, must be smaller than ED. Moving on to 27, I'm going to use a different color marker. I'm looking at the measure of angle BEC, which is this angle right here, my 88 degree angle, and I'm also looking at BEA, B -E -A, which is this angle down here, which happens to have a tick mark on it. So I see that the side across from my angle A, sorry, BEA is 7, right? But I don't have a side length across from my other angle. So that's going to be an issue. I need to figure out a different way around this problem. As you see here, though, I have a tick mark on BE and a tick mark on AE. And what that means is that the angles across from them have to be congruent. So that means angle A has to be congruent to angle ABE. So I'm going to put another tick mark into this picture. Put one right there. Now what I see is in triangle BAE, I have one, two, three congruent angles, 
mean this is an equilateral triangle, and that also tells me that each angle measures 60 degrees. So if that angle is 60 degrees, the other angle we were asked to look at was this one right here, which they tell us is 88 degrees. So I know that 60 is less than 88, meaning angle BEA is less than angle BEC. Reading it the way that they have written it on my page, angle BEC is greater than angle BEA. Angle BEC is greater than angle BEA. And then the last question that they give me is they want me to compare BC and BA, which now follows directly from what I've just proven. If I know that this angle is smaller than this angle, then this side must be smaller than this side. So reading it the way that they have it, I know that BC is greater than BA. Moving on to number 29, it's asking me to determine, is it possible for a triangle to have sides with a given length? And they give me my three sides here. So what I need to do is I need to check each of my three triangle inequalities. So my first one would be 6 plus 12 greater than 17. Yes, that's true. Now I choose two of my other sides, 6 plus 17. That would have to be bigger than my third side of 12. Yes, that's also true. And the last thing that I need to do is 12 plus 17 has to be greater than 6. And yes, that's also true. So yes, this is a triangle. Now for question number 30, they give me the lengths of two of my sides. They tell me two of my sides are 7 and 11. And they want me to describe the possible lengths for the third side. Now this stuff that they have written here, this x plus 7 is greater than 11, x plus 11 is greater than 7, and 7 plus 11 is greater than x, that's one way to set up this problem. But the thing that I taught you in class was a really convenient trick to do this. I told you all that you have to do to determine the possibilities for that third side is add your two numbers and subtract your two numbers. If I add them, I get 18. If I subtract them, I get 4. Now, I do want to talk about this subtraction real fast. I did 11 minus 7 because I subtracted the smaller number from the bigger number. If you would have done 7 minus 11, you just would have gotten negative 4. And you need to recognize that negative 4 is not obviously going to be a possible length because I have to have positive values. So you should have subtracted them the other way. Just make that a positive 4. So now I'm going to write my two values from smallest to biggest. I know my third side must be in between them. So I have 4 is less than x is less than 18. Okay, let's move the paper up a little bit. I'm on the last problem, problem number 31. Okay, so if measure of angle A, B, H, so this angle right here, is greater than measure of angle G, H, B, this angle right here, explain why A, H is greater than G, B in the figure at the right. Well, let me do something that might help some of you. And if you can see everything in this picture right now, you can go ahead and fast forward a little bit. But I'm going to separate my pictures. Because right now they're overlapping, which maybe makes this a little bit more difficult to see than it has to be. So I'm going to separate this into two triangles. I'm going to put my little tick marks on there that they had originally put on there. And we're good to go. Okay, so they're telling me that the measure of angle ABH, so this one here, is greater than GHB. ABH is bigger than GHB. So then explain why AH is bigger than GB. Okay, so what we can write is... 
A H is bigger than G B because A H is across from angle A B H which we were told is bigger than angle G H B. So because I know that angle A B H is bigger than angle G H B, I know that the sides of cross from them, A H must be bigger than G B. All right, I hope that review helped. I'll see you tomorrow in class. Please study up and good luck on your test.